Hi, I'm Cheryl Belson with American Sewing Guild, and today I have the pleasure of spending time with Emily Holman. Emily writes about her capsule wardrobe on her Emily Holman Designs blog, and she has over 40,000 followers on Instagram. I know I can say personally that I find her Instagram feed to be a real source of inspirational eye candy. Um, she describes herself as a shoe lover, a bookworm, a dog mama, a fashion enthusiast, and a sewist. And she says she enjoys creating the closet of her dreams, one colorful, coordinated collection at a time. That's a bit of a tongue twister. It is. I was excited to learn that <laughs> Emily is a Texas gal just like me, and I really hope that one day she and I can connect over a cup of coffee or a glass of wine in real life. So Emily, welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. I'm so excited to be here. Well, um, I can't wait to find out more about who you are and where you've come from and what you're doing. So let's just dive right in. Yes, ma'am. So um, one of the favorite things that um, I enjoy about doing these interviews is hearing the story behind how people got where they are today. And now currently, you're not uh, sewing in professionally or in the fashion industry, but I understand that you have been before. So I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you got into fashion originally and then the journey that took you to where you are today being a capsule wardrobe blogger. Yes, absolutely. So I've loved fashion, I think my whole life. Um, the first garment that I ever made was out of copy paper and I stapled pieces together to create a suit for my younger brother. I think I was seven or eight at the time. So super young and just sort of remember having the vision for like creating the, the shapes on him and around him and like stapling it together. Um, my parents followed that up a couple of years later by getting me a sewing machine for Christmas. And so I experimented on that and really taught myself a few things off and on for a few years. Um, originally when I was going to go to college, I was going to study physical therapy and was sort of on that track for the first year and a half of college and changed my mind, um, and decided to get into fashion because it was really what I, um, dreamt about and thought I was really good at and wanted to pursue. And so um, enrolled in a program at Phoenix College in Phoenix, Arizona, and earned my associate's degree in apparel design and product development there. And then I transferred to Baylor University in Waco, Texas, uh, where I earned a bachelor's degree in the same thing, apparel design and product development, which is just a fancy way of saying fashion design. Um, so I did that. And after college, uh, my husband and I moved down to Austin and I decided to take all of my enthusiasm for fashion and everything that I had just learned in college and my internship and put it into a business of my own. And so for five years, I had my own line of women's clothing and accessories. Mm -hmm. um, and I also did a lot of uh, custom design and bridal design. I offered alterations for a while. Um, and so that was that was a huge, huge experience in general, but a huge learning experience and just, uh, it was fantastic, but it was also a lot for someone who's pretty young at the time. Um, but it gave me a lot of um, hands-on experience with production um, and with sourcing and marketing and just the nitty gritty of running a business. Um, mm -hmm. So, Five years came and went and I just sort of thought, you know, I just don't, I don't see myself doing this for forever uh, just because it is business ownership is really something. Um, and so decided that there, that wasn't my permanent path. And so closed the business, took a year off and then decided that um, I needed some new clothes because in the time that I had the business, I invested all of my time, all of my energy, all of my resources into the business. And so walked away from that with um, a closet that didn't have a whole lot in it. And so I just sort of thought, you know, this might be a really, a really great thing for me to do is to, is to build the closet of my dreams. I know how to do it. Um, this, this could be really fun. 
let's let's make some of the things that that I need in my closet. And so it just started from there. Started a blog. It was a creative outlet only in the very beginning, um, and it quickly quickly became a little bit more than that. Um, I think maybe just because of my point of view with all of this, it was a little bit different. It was very different at the time um, and still is, I think. But um, I also went into it with um, maybe a little more experience and a little more formal training. Um, and so I think people really responded to that as well. Um, and it's just, it's really evolved into its, its own thing. Um, I have made a lot in the last four years. It's been almost four years that I've been doing that. Um, and I'm just making things that, that I love and that I wear and, um, really, really have managed to successfully fill the closet with a lot of pretty things. So <laughs> that is the long and short of it. <laughs> wow. A lot of, just a, a lot of wandering through to where you are today, but it's all connected. Um, the, it's all connected, uh, yeah. Yeah. The only thing that maybe isn't quite as connected is the jump from physical therapy to fashion design, but yeah. it's dealing with the body. You're fixing the body or you're clothing the body. So I guess it's connected. Yeah, it's, it's sort of connected. And you know what? It's okay if it's not. But but yeah, I have a very, um, a very technical way of thinking about things, which is probably what made me lean towards physical therapy and, and just uh, the mechanics of that. And um, but then I also have um, a big imagination and um, a, a creative side that is uh, uh, much more present than the technical side. So had to, had to follow that path. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, um, can you talk to us a little bit about your own approach to capsule wardrobe planning? Because that capsule wardrobe is kind of your, that's your niche. Um, so do you start typically with a fabric or with a, a theme like cruise vacation or, or something else? How does that work for you? So when I first started my blog um, and I was, you know, making things because I genuinely needed clothes, I had workout pants and some of my husband's old t-shirts in my closet. So I genuinely needed a lot of things. But when I started, I was just making things that, you know, I had some fabric in my fabric stash. And so I was just making one-off projects, uh, patterns that I liked or, you know, things that just sort of came to me. Um, and I only made a handful of things in the first, first few months, but because it was so disjointed um, and it was just sort of like random things, it didn't really do anything for me and for you know, the goal that I had set for myself. And so I sort of, it was a light bulb moment one day and I thought I need to apply the same concept to this, to making my wardrobe that I do or that I did when I was in business. Um, and that is creating cohesive collections of things, pieces that can be mixed and matched. Um, and just thinking about it in terms of uh, color coordinated groups for a couple of reasons. The first being that color is probably in the number one spot in terms of how I think about the things I want to make. Okay. Um, the colors that I love, the colors that I think I look good in, the colors that make me feel certain things. Um, and then also it's just from an efficiency standpoint. If, for example, I made wanted to make this shirt dress, but I also wanted um, a blouse out of the same color fabric or maybe a skirt or a pair of pants or what have you, doing all of those things at once is efficient. You only have one color in your serger, one color thread in your serger, and you've got the same color in your sewing machine. And it's just sort of, it is like an assembly line, but you're working with different things. So to me, it kept me engaged. So that's how that came about. I just sort of applied the principles and, and concepts that I have the formal training uh, for as a fashion designer and what I had used in business and applied that to sewing my own clothes. And for me, it is efficient, but incredibly fun 
to think about, oh, I love, I love this color. And then you stumble on a print, you know, that has the same colors in it mm -hmm. and maybe some different colors. And you can pull from that and, you know, make a pair of pants in a great Kelly green. And then you've got a blouse in a print that's got that color and other colors in it and it all sort of goes together. And so that is just what keeps me coming back to this. You know, it's the fabric and the color. And I am very, very aware of the power of clothing and how it makes us feel and what the potential of that is. How we, how we get dressed every day and how we present ourselves to the world is, is a big deal. And I always go back to the emotion of things a lot and thinking back to events, special events, or the mundane things, the everyday things, and what I was wearing, you know, and how that made me feel. And so I use fashion as a way to enjoy what I'm wearing, which is kind of a clunky way of, of just saying, for me, clothes is about that feeling, you know, making us feel like a million bucks. Um, and making us feel like, yes, this is how, this is my style and this is, this is me and it makes me an individual and it makes me unique and just seeing that through. So it's about applying those fashion designer things to it, but then also just having fun with color and, uh, and fo following that where it has led me three, almost four years in. So <laughs> This idea of what you're wearing and how it impacts how you're feeling, how has that played a role in your experience over the last few weeks of being in quarantine? Has that it played is, a role? It has, and that's a fantastic question. Um, when you and I were emailing back and forth and you sent me these questions, one of them you know, had to do with, well, when I look through you know, your Instagram or your blog, I don't see a lot of loungewear. I don't see, I don't see a lot of pajamas. And um, that's absolutely true. I've never really been interested in pajamas or loungewear, you know, or things like that. I have made a couple of things here and there, um, but that's really not what truly inspires me. Quarantine, however, has, you know, made us sort of rethink, or it has, it has for me in a way, rethink, what all of these clothes are for, you know, and I, this, this whole sewing your wardrobe experiment of mine isn't in, an indefinite thing, you know, eventually um, I'll get to the point where I've got a pretty good wardrobe and then, you know, that, that might be it, or there will be a few projects after that. But um, I, I wear everything that I make, but when I am home, I don't necessarily wear things if I'm not leaving the house. You know, I'm not going to walk around in my um, uh, silk gazar skirt with, with matching top. So for me, I am using, I am using fashion and all of the things that I love to sort of like power through the quarantine. And I'm using that for the end date, uh, so to speak. Um, you know, when we can leave again here and there and all of this, because I can't imagine life being stuck at home forever and ever, you know? Um, but I think we're going to be home a lot more. Um, and if that's the case, I'll just start having fashion shows in my backyard, you know, to, to wear all of this stuff. Um, so Please invite me. Please invite me. <laughs> yes, everyone's invited. Yes. I'll stay six feet apart, I promise. <laughs> I love it. We'll, we'll absolutely do it. But it, that, that's a great question um, because – it has certainly just this whole idea of being home so much more than we have been um, does it, it is in the back of my mind, but I think a lot of us appreciate a distraction from that. And I don't necessarily want to shift to, um, you know, making some things or even a lot of things that I can only wear at home. Um, just because I'm, I'm thinking about different occasions and I'm, thinking about the fashion and the fun, you know, of it all. So I, I, I may throw a lounge set in there <laughs> in the coming weeks, but probably going to stick to the silk gazar and the other things uh, that yeah. I have in the works. And actually you can see them in the, in the reflection of the mirror. 
<laughs> oh, you can. Look at that. Well, now that's yeah. super fun. All right. <laughs> awesome. Well, so um, I was going to head to the, to the your discussion about color. So let's go there because, um, I, and you've talked a little bit about it already. I truly just love whenever I see your collections, um, like a Fancy Friday picture. You, it's just like a, an explosion of color. And I love that about those uh, those pictures. So can you talk a little bit more about how you decide to combine colors or choose colors? Um, uh, can you go a little further with that that you already started a few minutes ago? Yes, absolutely. I could talk about color all day. <laughs> um, I figured out a long time ago um, what colors really work for me, um, but I also know what colors I'd love and they're pretty much the same. Um, and so I'm just sort of, again, go, going, going in that direction. I don't want to make a lot of things that I don't like and that don't look good on me. So really, I just started, you know, coral, for example, is a good one. Um, red is another one. Orange is another good one. Emerald is, is a good one. Um, so I use a lot of colors that, that work for me, but the fun part also came in combining, combining colors together. Um, and Fancy Friday, I call it the style series now because I didn't like being stuck only doing it on Friday, but um, that sort of came about as a way to showcase different color combinations or the outfits that sort of came together over time. Because mm -hmm. as you know, sewing takes an enormous amount of time, you know, and this is a huge investment. Um, I think a worthwhile investment, but a huge time commitment, you know, ma making all of these things. And so it doesn't happen overnight. Um, but, you know, years go by and I have something to show for all of this work. And I started to just really like to see that part of it. How is it all coming together? Um, you know, and I've made, you know, a blouse, for example. How many, how many different ways can we wear that blouse? What can I pair it with? You know, what is maybe a new or interesting combination that I haven't tried before? Mm -hmm. And so that is the whole idea with Fancy Friday or the style series is showing colors together to make us all, and it's helpful for me too, you know, to see different things together, um, to think about colors in maybe a, a way that we haven't before, but then also the outfits and to show the potential um, and the, the opportunity with sewing, you know, what you can create. Um, and so that's, that's really where that came from. So I have the best time <laughs> um, dressing my mannequins in, in different clothes um, and showing a group of outfits together all at once, because I think that that tells such an impactful story mm -hmm. about what you can create with a little imagination and some fabric and some other things, you know, but with your own two hands. And so I love seeing the colors together and um, the, the fabrics and, and all of that. And I, I have used Fancy Friday as a way to showcase a number of other things as well. So there was um, an addition of that a couple years ago now where all of the garments buttoned. So there were shirt dresses, there were blouses, there were um, skirts and different things, but everything buttoned. And that was one of my most popular Fancy Fridays because it just showed so many different types of things that all buttoned and they all worked together and it created so many different looks. Um, and so that's been really fun too. Um, mostly I do it around a color theme, uh, but sometimes you can have fun with, with different elements uh, as well. Um, you've kind of talked a little bit about your personal style, but I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about how you developed your own personal style. I mean, you, you don't have to look at your Instagram feed or your blog for very long to see that you don't see loungewear and things like that in it, that you do see what I guess what I would call um, maybe business casual or um, up in terms of um, fanciness. I see a lot of classicness yeah. in your, so t tell us how you developed your own personal style and how you, that plays a role in your choices. A lot of trial and error. 
Um, but I did, I did recognize early on um, what type of body I have, which was probably, probably the biggest thing. I'm very hourglass. Um, people ask me all the time how tall I am. <laughs> so, um, I had to put that on the frequently asked questions page on my blog. I am five seven, um, but I'm I'm very curvy, as well. And so I figured out a long time ago um, that certain silhouettes look look better on me. Um, it's it's good for me to belt a lot of things and accentuate the waist. Um, I don't look good in um, straight things necessarily. Um, when I was uh, 17, 18, headed to physical therapy, but still thinking about fashion, I really started to appreciate uh, the clothes from the 40s and 50s, the 50s specifically. Really loved that very feminine, um, really full skirt, classic, pretty, polished look. Um, and so that has stuck with me. So I appreciate that silhouette, but um, I don't, I don't necessarily want to look like I'm in costume every day, you know, or, or I need my clothes to be a little more modern and a little more practical, um, even though I still love a full skirt. Um, so there is that influence there, um, but figured out my body type and then just tried a lot of things on. That's how I know I don't look good in, in the straight, you know, kind of, kind of like relaxed silhouette that looks good on so many other people. It does not look good on me. And so, um, trial and error. And then, um, again, I sort of go back to the, when you know you look good in something and you feel good in something that is so powerful. And so just really started making things and wearing things and figuring it out and, um, figuring out what length also, you know, of a skirt, um, looks good on me. I remember for a few years I was seeing, um, big name stylists on TV telling every woman on earth to wear a straight skirt that hit right above their knee. And I took issue with that every time I heard it because that that's actually not the most flattering length on everyone. And I hated that like blanket statement for all body types. Um, for me, and maybe it's because I'm a little bit taller than average, right below the knee is actually most flattering. Um, because of the shape of my legs, you know, so it's just, um, sort of figuring that out. Um, and again, what, whatever makes you feel good. I don't like to put a lot of rules on things when people ask me, well, how long should this be? I can sort of give them some guidance, you know, based on proportions. Um, but ultimately it's, it's what you feel, feel really good in. Um, and I know a lot of us who are making our own clothes, also approach it from needing things to fit or needing certain styles for a number of reasons. And I call those the avoids. What do you not want to flaunt? Mm. Do you need your skirts to be a certain length? Um, can you wear strapless? Can you show your back? You know, there are, there are a lot of considerations. And for me too, um, when I am getting dressed and the things that I can and cannot wear. Um, and there's a lot that I can't and that's okay. Um, you know, so I'm always working around those two. Um, but it's really figuring out your personal style, recognize what type of body shape you have and, you know, kind of putting some different styles in that category that complement your body shape and then trial and error and then weed out the stuff that doesn't work and just go with the stuff that does. I mean, there is a reason why I've made a six or seven of one particular Vogue wrap dress pattern <laughs> because it, it is a winner and uh, you know, no, no shame in getting the most value out of your pattern and, and making something that you truly, that, that again, compliments you and that you feel great in. That's, that's great. It is a journey. Um, it is. I think it's, it is. Uh, it's not something that you can just go to a one hour workshop and then you're done. Yep. It's, it's a journey, a trial and error. So that's good. Well, you know, um, I, several years ago, I personally, I'm a goal setter. That's the way I roll. I like to set goals and then I like to head for them. And so several years ago, I said, because you're a goal setter too. It's, yes, I thought absolutely. I recognized yes. another goal setter. Yes. yes. Um, 
I set a personal goal that because I was finding, I was sewing an independent thing that I loved, but it was a Mm one-off. It didn't really go with anything in particular. It just was a one-off. So I said, all right, I am going to challenge myself to do a capsule wardrobe every quarter, five to seven pieces a quarter. And um, I'm going to learn along the way about putting things together, color, texture, all of that. Well, I did that for two years. And at the end of two years, I decided enough already. I feel like a sweatshop and I feel like I have no space to be creative because I got to get those five to seven out because I'm a goal setter and I got to achieve my goal. Yeah. I know that's, that's over the top, but so I stopped and I, now I'm kind of down a much slower, just make a piece and be as creative as I want to be. So I want to ask you because you are still in this, cranking out these capsules that are amazing. How do you, what do I say? Maintain the joy and not move into sweatshop mode. That that's a fantastic question. I'm also a goal setter and those self-imposed deadlines have been my own undoing so many times. (laughs) Um, uh, You know, that, that has also been a journey uh, for me as well. Um, how do I, how do I keep, keep going? I have learned to allow myself the, the space to step away. The fabric, the color, all of that is, is hugely inspirational and keeps me going, but I am making a lot of things. And while there is, you know, there will come a time when I'm not cranking out so many things and probably uh, 2020 is is my last major year for so much uh, production. Um, I keep it interesting by working on a lot of things at once. Um, so I will batch cut, you know, say a dress, a couple tops, a pair of pants or something um, all at once and then start going on those things so that, and I have a, I have a perfect timely example of this. Um, and some of my followers may laugh when I, when I tell you this, but I am uh, working on a blue linen blouse. Um, I don't have a solid blue long sleeve button up blouse in my closet. And I had the fabric and linen is so perfect for summer and it made sense for, you know, us being in Texas and, and so loved, loved that. So I'm working on this blouse and there does come a time when it can feel a little uh, boring. You know, um, I, I love blouses and blouses and I've made a lot of them, but this particular blue linen blouse was starting to wear me down. And so I just sort of said, you know what, I need to just put this aside just for a couple of days, work on something that is um, completely different and then come back to this, revisit it. And so that's exactly what I did. I put the blue blouse aside just for a couple of days and I picked up another project, um, cut it out, and it is this um, very bright orange kind of tropical print um, dress with kimono sleeves and sort of a plunging neckline and a big full skirt, and so it's completely different. Um, And so that's how I'm able to keep it going. Um, A mix of different projects that, you know, I, I can work on a few different things, put something aside if it is a little bit boring just for a second doesn't mean that I don't love sewing but maybe a little boring for just a second or um, if I've gotten to a part that I'm just not in the mood to tackle just yet like um, uh, you know setting in sleeves or the buttons and buttonholes or or whatever whatever it is and work on something else for just a minute and then come back to it so it keeps me engaged it keeps things interesting Um, I will also say that I figured out a long time ago what projects I was not interested in making that really just, there's no other way to put it except to say they bummed me out. (laughs) I cannot, I, um, I sort of felt way back that maybe I should be making more in terms of a well-rounded wardrobe. Should I be making t-shirts? Should I be making the lounge shorts or pants or whatever? And when I did that, when I experimented with that and made a t-shirt, I did not enjoy that. (laughs) So I figured out that for me, 
I am okay buying certain things um, because I love the process of sewing and creating, but it is certain things that bring me more joy than others. And so I just allowed myself to edit those less inspiring projects out and focus on the things that just, that I'm a little more obsessed with. <laughs> I'm actually having the best time that I have ever had with any collection with what I'm currently working on. Um, I, and I'm sure you can relate to this. I have just found some amazing fabrics this year. Absolutely oh. incredible. Yes. Um, and so that, that's a huge part of it. I love the colors so much. So I'm doing orange all year and bringing in different colors that go with orange throughout to show some different color combinations. And then to also, um, there's some things in other colors that I want to make as well. I'm sure that a lot of people um, would love to hear what your process is for searching for fabric. I mean, I know that you will put, uh, put links to things you have found, but how do you go about your personal fabric search? So let's talk about that. Um, also one of my favorite, favorite subjects. Um, and, and honestly, the fabric and the color is, is why I know that I will never, I will never be finished, finished with all of this. Um, there, there's just no way I love fashion and I love fabric and I love color too much. So, um, there's that. How do I go about, uh, searching for fabric? Um, I shop a lot of different places. So I shop online. Um, Mood is a favorite place. Um, Promenade Fine Fabrics in New Orleans is another favorite. I found a lot on fabric.com. Um, we, we live in a world, unfortunately, where the, the amazing like locally owned family fabric shops are not around much anymore. And so mm -hmm. it, it, a lot of stuff comes, comes online. And that's okay. I'm perfectly comfortable and happy and, and you know, highly recommend um, ordering fabric online. But I also love finding things um, that maybe only a few other people have or no one else has. And so anytime I am traveling, I, my, one of my first stops after we grab a bite, after getting off the plane is, is the fabric shop. Um, I love seeing, seeing the fabric in person. I'm sure you do too, touching it, feeling it. Um, there is no substitute for that. And so, um, my husband and I have, tra have traveled a little over the past few years. And so I go, I go, if there's a fabric store, I'll go there. Um, and there's one in Las Vegas. So I've gotten fabrics from there. Um, we've been to, uh, San Francisco, Brytex fabrics in San Francisco is another good one. Um, we went to Europe last summer and so I got fabric uh, in Florence and Paris and Amsterdam um, and then earlier this year before the coronavirus pandemic um, we went to New Orleans um, and I went to promenade and shopped there in person and then we went to New York a few weeks after that and I went to mood and a couple other places in New York so I take advantage whenever I can of, of being in a place that has just truly magnificent places to shop for fabric in person because mm -hmm. I know that that is such a treat um, but shopping online and um, I know what I'm looking for um, a lot of times I, I know fabric really well so that does help um, but I'm searching for specific things a lot um, and sometimes I'll buy a fabric and then not use it for a while you know I'm hanging on to it either because I'm thinking about what to use it for or um, I know what I'm going to use it for, but I don't have the pattern yet or at any number of reasons. Um, and because I have been doing this collections thing for a few years, if I know that I'd like to do a little group of Kelly green, for example, and I find a gorgeous Kelly green fabric, I'll hang on to it until I'm ready to tackle uh, that collection. But um, there are certain fabrics that I, I prefer, um, natural fibers. I use a lot of cotton, a lot of linen, um, silk, a, a little bit. Silk is not necessarily the most practical of, of fabrics, especially um, in, in summertime in Texas. 
Um, but Silk Gazar is actually my favorite fabric. I love it. It is so unique um, and so, um, so unusual and so beautiful. And I found uh, Carolina Herrera um, Orange Silk Gazar at Mood or at Fabrics and Fabrics, I'm sorry, um, in New York back in February. And it's got blue flowers on it. So beautiful. I know I, I could talk about fabrics all day, but um, that is just so much fun to find them. And um, they're, they're treasures, you know, yeah. they're, they're treasures. Yeah, yeah they really are. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I love hearing before we end the interviews, I always love hearing what's coming up next. What is on the horizon for Emily Holman in the future? For a long, long time, I have been saying that I was going to get on YouTube <laughs> and I've put it off and put it off and come up with different reasons not to do it and, um, you know, tried to force myself to do it earlier this year and, and, and again, couldn't. But um, I think that it is time to um, make, make snackable little version videos that show the closet everything that I have made over the last four years, you know, how to wear it, how to style it, um, the different versions of the same pattern and, and all of that. Um, I, I find one thing that really works for me in terms of um, being excited to do all of this is, is the clothes. Um, I think that a lot of the information is out there in terms of how to do this, you know, how to, how to insert elastic into a casing, how to do a blind hem, how to sew a French seam. All of that information I think is out there um, for people to find. What I would really like to see more of is the fashion in the clothes because ultimately that's what we're making here. And so to see it sort of presented in a way that is like, oh my gosh, man, that, like that, that could have come from Nordstrom or, you know, wherever. Um, but she made that. Wow. Like that, that little piece, that, that piece of inspiration, I think does more for encouraging people to get into this and to want to learn how to do it and be excited to do it. than maybe a tutorial for inserting a zipper, you know, while that is also important, um, I think I'm a little more interested in um, uh, the ins inspirational part of it. So to that, um, I, I think it's time for some some little videos. Um, and so that's probably what I'll get into later this year, just to kind of bring it all full circle and yeah. to show, show what I've done over the past uh, four years uh, creating all of this. That sounds like a lot of fun. I think that a lot of people will have a great time watching you styling and combining and talking about how you do that. I'm excited about it. Well, Emily, thank you so much for taking time with me this uh, afternoon. It's been a delight to get to know more about you, to get know more about um, your journey and your process. And, well, and I'm sure that it will have sparked interest and inspired some of our audience as well. So thank you so much for joining me. And we will be looking with great anticipation to see what comes next from Emily Holman. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate it. <laughs>